really wish I had understood this graph before I bought my electric car. So in this video, I'm going to explain exactly how to read it, why it's important and what it means if you're thinking about buying an electric vehicle. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video about using Ionity's ultra fast charging stations, which are popping up across the UK. I wanted to test the whole experience, but ultimately I was interested in how fast it could charge my car. Unfortunately, I made a couple of pretty major mistakes and people rightly pointed them out to me in the comments. What I didn't take account of was the charging curve of my car. All electric cars that you will see advertised, they'll probably tell you about their charging speed. So something like a Porsche Taycan, top end of the market can charge at 275 kilowatts, a Model 3 about 175 and my e-Nero turns out about 75. All of those numbers are peak speeds. It means you can only get that much energy into the car at certain points in the charging cycle. And that is where this graph comes in. Here is what we call the charging curve of my Kia e Nero. On the bottom, we have something called state of charge or SOC. And all that is, is a percentage, 0 to 100, which represents the battery and how full it is. On the vertical axis, we have kilowatts. So how much power can flow from the charger into the car. So the line on the graph is simply showing us how much energy can flow into the battery in relation to how full the battery already is. And if we take a closer look at the graph, you can see where I made the two main mistakes in that previous video. Mistake number one, well, the charging speed of the e Nero cannot get up to 100 kilowatts. It peaks out at about 75, 76. You can see that from the graph, it gets there about 40% charge. The reason I thought I could get 100 kilowatts is because I misunderstood the e Nero spec. So on the Kia website, it gives you a charging time for get from 0% to 80% based on being plugged into a 100 kilowatt charger. That doesn't mean that 100 kilowatts can flow into the car. It just simply is basically a reference point for times across different models. Mistake number two. Well, I was trying to charge the car when it was already at about 70% SOP. And we can see from the graph here that, well, I'm gonna get nowhere near that peak and speed's gonna pretty rapidly drop off anywhere forward from there. The reason I wanted to make a follow-up video is because, well, it's really about the practicalities of electric car driving. Say I was going on a really long journey and I wanted to get 100% charge into my car to maximize the range. It's important to understand that trying to charge the car from 70 to 100% is gonna take a lot longer than it's gonna to take to go from say 10 to 40%, even though in both instances, you're putting 30% of the car's total capacity into the battery. And obviously it's gonna take you a lot longer, so you're gonna to need to plug in sooner. Similarly, of course, it's important to understand that just because you plug into a high powered charger doesn't mean that you're gonna get a maximum charge into the car all the time, and it's not gonna be a simple linear rate of charge. All electric cars are gonna have a slightly different charging curve, but they're all pretty much gonna follow that same trend of peaking and then dropping off the further you get towards a full battery. Guys, I hope you found that video helpful. And of course, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. That's really helpful for me and the channel. And if you've watched more than one of my videos, click on the subscribe button to stay informed when I put my next one up. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.